Okay, what is it this time? Wait, what? That's not what it says on the video title. Much better. But wow, isn't this going to be a mathful? <laughs> Get it? Because math sounds like mouth, and this is also a big topic to talk about? Uh, no? Well, that's alright. Before I continue, I just want to let you lovely voice connoisseurs know that at this time of the recording, my voice is not as good as the Smash announcer because I'm sick. Yay! Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. Vectors. They are very important to know when it comes to game development or for surviving your math class. I hope by the end of this Smash math, not only that you're already a great or overpowering Smash player, but you also get your math skills buffed. If you have no idea whatsoever or do not plan to do game development, that's alright and don't worry. I'm not going to give you boring examples on a whiteboard or be using a nearly empty Unity project because that's not how I would like to teach game dev stuff or anything really. From a game or to another, I'll show you vector math with Smash Ultimate. So let us commence with our training. A vector looks like an arrow and you may have seen it in your physics or math textbook or you seen any of Link's special neutral attacks where he uses the bow and arrows like you see here with Toon Link's spamming it. A vector consists of a direction, a magnitude, where a magnitude is referring to how big the arrow is, and it can have one or multiple components. Normally it would have multiple components, x, y, and z, for example. With a 2D vector, it would have an X and a Y, useful for dealing with 2D games or making a user interface. With 3D vector for 3D games, it would have X, Y, and Z. Even just a single number, like the smash percentage, can be represented as a 1D vector, a vector that only has one component. We can treat the smash percentage as a magnitude though, or just treat it like a normal individual number and use it for something else and not a vector. That's okay too. That's probably what usually we use a single number for, not a vector. So you pro it's not often that you will see a 1D vector. It really depends on the situation. But for the sake of simplicity, I'll stick to explaining concepts and, and examples in 2D. With that description, we can store information about anything into a vector. We can figure out the character's position on the stage, rotation, scale, their velocity, which is how fast they are going in a direction, other physics stuff like collision, and you got your texturing, and etc. A lot of stuff. Figuring out the position is simple, thanks to the grid. Let's keep it to the nearest whole number. I know that there are smaller lines in between, but again, let's keep it easy like this level 3 CPU pit. Let's see. The numbers on the red or blue lines increment by 5, so Young Link's position is 25 on the horizontal x-axis and 5 up on the vertical y-axis. For Pit, it's 30, and let's say his point, the center point, is around his chest, stomach area, so we make that 30 on the x, 1 on the y. And we could say, and we can say that the z is either 0 or 1. It doesn't matter for now because they share the same position in the Z direction. And again, I'll stick to using 2D vectors for the majority of this tutorial. Let's check out another scenario. As many of you Smash players know, Zelda has some directional tech and recovery. If she can teleport this amount from the starting position, which is here, where will she reappear? When adding or subtracting two vectors, you can just add them component wise. So add the X's and the Y's together to get your answer. Simple as that. However, a small rule when adding or subtracting vectors is that we can't combine a scalar number like the smash percentage to a vector. For example, what does zero plus a position vector equal to? Not all the components will line up with that said zero. We can turn that smash percentage into a vector that matches the size of the position vector so that it will be zero, zero. Zero on the X, zero on the Y. A vector that only have zeros is called a zero vector. That zero vector plus a position vector will just be the position itself. Zelda charges up the phantom attack and have it go to the right while she heads off to the left. Let's figure out what the vectors add up to be. Assume that going to the right or up is positive. The phantom goes to the right 
by positive 5 and doesn't go up or down so we can say that the direction is 0. So Zelda reappeared at this point here. So line up the components again and the answer will be this. Another way to visually help deal with vectors is to combine the arrows together. Have the tip of the first vector to point to the end of another vector's tail. With multiple vectors, you can see which direction the resultant vector will go in. From the first vector's tail to the last vector's tip. Is this grid stage kind of boring? Let's go to a more colorful stage. Let's mess with the speed of a few characters. We have Young Link here and Sonic. As we may know, Sonic is the fastest character in the game. Debatable, maybe. <laughs> it depends. Definitely faster than Young Link over here. According to Smash Wiki, Young Link's dash speed is 1.749 and in the air it's 0.966, ignoring gravity. Let me just round up those numbers to be 2 and 1. And for Sonic's, his dashing speed is a whopping 3.85 on the ground and 1.2 in the air, but let's just round it to 4 and 1. Remember, keeping it CPU level 3 easy. Couldn't figure I couldn't figure out how much the bunny hood speeds up the character, so let's say it doubles it up, so 2. When multiplying or dividing, unlike adding and subtracting, you can do the operation to each component. So if Link wears the bunny hood, his speed will now be 4 on the ground and 2 in the air. With the timer, we can slow down Sonic's speed in half. So it would be 2 and 0 0.5 or half or 1 over 2, depending on how you want to see that number. A quick note though, you probably won't see, you probably won't normally see vectors getting divided by a number. Instead, they usually get multiplied with a fraction. Dividing the vector by 2 versus multiplying a vector by 1 over 2 will give you the same result but the multiplication method is probably used more. Unless division is part of a formula, like you will see with unit vectors later. And the reason why I'm saying probably is because I'm probably mistaking it when you do matrix operations, and it's a completely different topic from this video, so it's out of scope here. You might be thinking, well, how about multiplying a vector with another vector? Oh boy. Um, it's probably not what you think, and there are two versions of it, air quotes versions. I'll get to that later in this video. But for now, let's check out this epic battle that's happening in Norfair. Here we are in Norfair. We can figure out how far Samus and Ridley are from each other and see if the charge shot will be able to hit Ridley. This can be applied to any characters with a projectile, items thrown, or a Pokemon range attack, etc. To figure out the difference, we take the destination minus the starting point destination being Ridley and the starting point being Samus. Just like in the previous part, we are subtracting. However, we only get to know the vector, the direction, but we don't know the magnitude. In this case, we are treating the magnitude as the distance of that resultant vector. It's simple to figure that out. The formula is the Pythagorean theorem. C equals square root of A squared plus B squared. You may have used it for finding the hypotenuse of a triangle. Translating that into vectors, it would be the magnitude is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, also plus z squared if it's a 3D vector. And you keep adding in components squared depending on how big the vector would be. Here's the situation. Samus and Ridley are facing each other off on the opposite sides of Norfair. Let me lay out the lines here. I counted 10 on the x, and to make it convenient, since there are three platform levels, we'll make it their own Y points, so three. So Samus' position is 0, 3, and really is at 9, 3. Let the range of Samus' charge shot to be 10. So if the distance between the two is 10 or less, then it's a hit. Let's get the distance first. So it's 9, 0. Find the distance with a the theorem, the square root of 9 squared plus 0 squared. So it's 81 plus 0, which is 81. Square root of it is 9. Since 9 is less than 10, we can conclude with certainty that the charge shot will hit Ridley. Or maybe you play enough to know that you can eyeball it. Either way, you picture the direction of the shot and you imagine how far it would go. Another quick example that is not a straight shot, Samus is down to the second platform going to fire a homing missile. Here are their positions. And let the homing missile range to be 7. 
So the distance is 5, 1, and the magnitude is the square root of 5 squared plus 1 squared. So that ends up being the square root of 26, which is 5.09. That's less than the missile range, so it's a hit. You can use this for making a game mechanic or getting the status of a game like figuring out if the Pokoblins should be alerted when Link is nearby. Maybe he made a loud noise stepping on the grass in Breath of the Wild. In Mario Kart, you can figure out who is in first place, second, third, and so on on the track. Or for calculating smash damage. The closer to the explosion center, the more damage you take and vice versa. If you have any more ideas, examples, or would like to share how you use this, please comment down below. I would love to see what you guys write down or how you use it. But before I move on to a different game, let's let's gravity back into Smash Ultimate. Here we are at Politanus Temple. Pit and Politana are completely separate from each other at the opposite ends of the stage. And our objective is to help Pit guide him back through his maze of a temple to Politana. So but let's say this is the center point and they have their positions. Those are some big vectors shooting out from the center, overlapping, covering the stage, all thanks to, you know, video editing. Uh, sorry for the meta. What if there is a way to just scale all those arrows down to have the size of one? Unit vectors are like that. Unit vectors are vectors that get scaled down to have the magnitude of one. That process is called normalizing a vector. The formula is simple. The vector divided by its magnitude. It can be useful if you just want to know about the direction of the vector. Combine this ability with other vector math operations and you can pull off numerous game mechanics like having a navigation system for Pit here to guide him back to Politana. I kind of don't want to leave them separately so before I finish this example I like to guide Pit back to Politana. So let's figure out where Politana is. On the edge of the screen, you can see a small arrow that shows which direction Politana is at. Follow it and we will be able to find her right around here. Alright, found her. Awesome. Ending off with a happy reunion, so let's go on vacation. Alright, the time has come. Remember back in Green Hill Zone, I mentioned that there are two air quotes versions of multiplying a vector with another vector. This is one of them and it's important to learn about. The dot product, also known as the scalar product. To do it, you multiply each of the vector components and add the result all together. In the end, you should have a number as an answer, but there is more to it. There are a few properties to know when doing the dot product. If the answer is greater than zero or positive, then the two vectors are facing generally in the same direction, like an acute angle. If the answer is less than zero or negative, then the two vectors are facing generally in the opposite direction, like an obtuse angle. And if the answer is zero, then that means the two vectors are perpendicular, forming a right angle. So here, check out this example. Mario and Princess Peach are enjoying their sightseeing tour thanks to the stage flying around Delfino Plaza. And we can tell already that they are facing each other. To make it simple, let's make Mario's direction to be negative one, zero, and Princess Peach's direction to be one, zero. So they're looking in front of each other along the x direction. Multiply the x's and you get negative one. Multiply the zeros from the y's to get zero. Negative one plus zero is negative one. And using the properties before, it means that they're looking in the opposite direction, just like what we're seeing right now. But what if Princess Peach wants to get a better view from the platform above, and Mario is looking out to see where she's trying to look at. Both are looking in the same general direction. Peach is on the edge, so she is sort of looking downward in front. Her vector can be one, negative one and Mario is 1, 0 because he's looking straight ahead. He doesn't know exactly where she's looking at. <laughs> Probably looking at all the piantas below. Figuring out the dot product, so 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1 is 0, is 0, add up the two products and it's 1. Since it's positive, it means that they're facing in the same general direction. So, so far we just determined if two characters are facing each other. Another use of the dot product is projection. 
which is projecting a vector into a certain direction. That is very important for collision detection. In gamer lingo, it's important to know that you hit something with hitboxes. If you are familiar with the popular separating axis theorem, or SAT for short, for collision detection, that's great. You already know how projection is used. Just in case for those who don't know, it's alright. I'll try to explain the main point behind that theorem. You are shooting out vertices from your hitbox into space to create a line called an axis in that direction. And I can explain it in a different video. Essentially, you create axes and you make sure if, if all axes pairs are touching each other, then they are colliding. But let me not scare you anymore with physics. It's already scary enough. The last shining application example is lighting. Get it? Because shine sprites and, and light? Uh, uh, shine? Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. I'll be here for the next maybe few minutes. There is a lighting technique called Lambert's cosine law. You may have encountered that word in shader programming, in Unity, Blender, or any other 3D content creation software that has lighting in it. It helps calculate which part of the character or object should get light, mid-tone, and shadow. The light source here at Delfina Plaza seems to be out in the water in front of the plaza, high above in the horizon, and is facing towards the shine gate in the background. So if we compare these screenshots, we can see the shadows are different on the ground, and we can see the light shining in different areas of the character, depending where the stage, you know, takes them. If you know any more applications of using the dot product, please comment down below. I'm really eager to know what else it could be used for. Let's, so enough about lighting. Let's check out the other air quote version of multiplying. Here we go. The second, the last, and probably the more complicated version of multiplying two vectors, the cross product. This will return a vector that is, dramatic pause, perpendicular to the two vectors. Did that blow your mind? Yes, you can figure out what is the third hidden vector that is perpendicular to the two given vectors. All these examples that we, we've done are in 2D. This game is in 3D, so the, ac the Z axis is pointing to the stage, background, and the foreground. Let me prove to you that you can figure out the Z vector with just the X and the Y vectors. The first vector is the X, and it's going to be 1, 0, 0. The reason for the third component is there is for the Z, and we have to make sure that the components line up. The second vector is the Y, and it's going to be 0, 1, 0. So check out this cross product formula. Get ready. For finding the X, it's the first vector's Y times second vector's Z minus first vector's Z times second vector's Y. And I'm not done yet. Finding the Y is first vector's Z, second vector's X minus first vector's x times second vector's z. Lastly, the z component is first vector's x times second vector's y minus first vector's y times second vector's x. So, if I made a mistake, please let me know. <laughs> but um, there you have it. Plugging those numbers in, you, you will end up getting zero on the x, zero on the y, but one on the z. So there is something in the Z component. An important note for a cross product is that it is not commutative. In other words, order matters. If I switch to two vectors and did the cross product again, then the answer will be different. In this case, it would be negative one in the Z component. That would mean I'm going in the opposite direction. A common usage for this is rotation. Very important. See here at Brinstar Depth? The whole stage rotates depending where Kraid in the background strikes it. If Kraid hits the right side, then the stage will rotate clockwise. If it hits the left side, then it rotates counterclockwise. It's spinning on the z-axis, the axis that is pointing through the stage into the foreground and back out into the background where Kraid shows up. How would you know on which axis the stage spins on? Well. This is my mnemonic device. Remember back in school when you grab a ruler that has a hole in the middle? So you put it on a pencil and you start smacking the end of the ruler to spin it? No? Am I the only one who does that? I'm joking. I'm sure you've done it or seen someone else do it. Crate is like that student who would treat the stage like a ruler on a stick. 
Um, that's a weird analogy. <laughs> but, alright, quick. What about Samus' neutral air attack? Which axis does she rotate in? Imagine a pole going straight down the attack, so she would rotate herself on the y-axis. Another example is making a homing attack to go in the right direction. Samus' homing missile, like back in Norfair, managed to find its way to Ridley. Some of the assist trophies chase around other players around the stage. How would they know? They use cross product. There are so many things that you can do with these vector operations in math. I can't cover them all, but these are important to know, and there are so many examples that you can use with vectors. But I don't want to make the video way too long, as it is already. I already spent a lot of time introducing these concepts and doing examples. Again, comment if you would like to share how you use some of the vector stuff here, or if you know more applicable examples. There are, again, a lot. I can't stress that enough. I hope this was fun and that you learn something new or see vector math in a different perspective. Ooh, if it did combo. help you, please like this video, share this with your game dev friends if you want to, I appreciate that. If you did, <laughs> don't forget to join the Discord if you want to hang out or play Smash with me on stream. Links are in the description, and of course, subscribe to see more tutorials like this, and I'll see you in the next level. Bye!